Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer from Industrial Metallurgists. In this brief video, I'll explain a little bit about metal annealing, and more specifically, I'll be talking about the recrystallization anneal process. So, what is annealing? Um, well, for first of all, I want to be specific, and, and to avoid confusion, I'll be talking about the recrystallization anneal process. So, for different metals, there are different annealing processes that are used uh, for different purposes that result in different metallurgical changes inside of the metal. For for metals that are that are cold worked, um, excuse me, that are annealed after cold working, we use the recrystallization anneal. The purpose of this heat treatment, this annealing process, is to reduce the metal's hard strength and hardness after cold working, and to improve the metal's ductility after cold working. So, why is it used? Well, first of all, it might be used to enable further cold working. So at steel mills or aluminum mills or copper and brass mills or any mill that makes any, any type of metal, they use cold rolling, cold drying for bar rod and wire or for tubing. They use these processes to reduce the metal's um, thickness and reduce wall thickness and, and to change the size and shape of the metal. And as during cold working, the metal's strength increases and its ductility decreases, and to enable further cold working, it may be necessary to anneal the material in order to reduce the strength and hardness and improve its ductility in order to be able to continue cold working to continue to change the shape and reduce the thickness of the material. Also, it might be used to, to meet mechanical property specifications for, the, for whoever will be using the material afterwards. Um, and people using it afterwards might be using the material to, um, to uh, form form a component out of that material. Also, for people that are that, that might be made, fabricating components where it's necessary to fabricate the component in multiple steps, uh, annealing might be used for uh, in between the steps in order to reduce the, restore the ductility of the metal to enable further further uh, fabrication steps of the component. So, in this slide, I'll explain what happens inside of a metal during a recrystallization anneal. So the micrographs shown here are for a, a brass alloy. It was copper with 30% zinc. And the, the sample on the left was, was cold, uh, um, cold worked. It was reduced in thickness by 50%. And we can see that the grains are elongated in the rolling direction. And this metal had a strength of 80 KSI. And this in increase in strength compared to the annealed metal was due to the introduction or the uh, uh, increase in the number of dislocations in the metal during during the cold working. If you want to learn more about dislocations, you can watch our um, five key metallurgy concepts video. Um, so the number of dislocations in the metals increased during cold working, which has resulted in, in an increase in the metal strength. The same uh, metal that was also reduced in thickness by 50% was then it was annealed at 1022 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. And what we see is that new grains formed inside of the metal. So the cold work grains are gone and new grains are formed in the metal. These new grains have, a, uh, have fewer dislocations inside of them. And as a result, their strength is much lower. It's 11 KSI compared to the cold work metal. And then the sample on the right was also reduced in thickness, but then it was annealed at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it, is, it was annealed at a higher temperature, resulting in larger grains compared to the, to the lower temperature anneal metal. And the larger grain material resulted in a lower uh, yield strength material. Um, and that the reason for the difference in, in, in strength because of the grain size is discussed in our Principles of Metallurgy course, if you're interested in learning that. So during the annealing process, there are three steps of changes that occur inside of the metal. The first step is recovery. This involves annihilation and rearrangement of the dislocations that are in, inside of the metal. This might result in a slight reduction of metal strength, uh, depending on the metal. The next step after recovery is recrystallization. This is what we, uh, inside of the metal, new grains form from the cold work grains, and those new grains then grow together to, to overtake the, the cold work metal. So when, the, we, when um, the annealing is done, there is no more cold work grains and we have new grains that have formed. And the new grains have fewer dislocations than the cold work grains. Then after the new grains have formed and grown together, then we have grain growth. And with, with grain growth, the larger grains grow and the small grains shrink 
with continued annealing. If you're interested in learning more, um, you can watch our cold working and annealing video, which goes into, into more explanation about what happens inside of a metal during cold working and during annealing. And you'll be learning about um, all these factors that are shown here. So you learn about the factors that influence the, the annealing process and annealed metal grain size and the effects of grain size on strength, hardness, and forming properties. And if you're interested in learning more about metallurgy and how to influence the, prop, the properties of a metal through composition, microstructure, and manufacturing processes, then consider taking our courses or watching our videos or listening to our podcasts or reading our articles. Information about all of them is available on our, on our website, and here's the web address. We have lots of different courses and lots of videos on very specific, uh, specific areas of metallurgy as well as podcasts and articles. So that's it. Um, I want to say thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was you found it to be informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or to call. And uh, good luck with your medals.